As a visual effects artist, you may have encountered some of the challenges that come along with animating a graphic with data. I want to show you how you can import a data file directly into Adobe After Effects CC and use that data set to control what happens in your animation. The data file that After Effects imports is the JSON data interchange format. JSON makes it easy to bring in a complex set of data into After Effects and connect it to your project like we've got here with this median house price example. Now if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the assets that accompany this tutorial. Now we'll work with a small part of that initial animation just to explore how JSON is connected to your project and use that to drive our animation. First up, we'll need to import our JSON file like we do with any other footage. Now if you're not starting with a JSON file, you can easily convert many data files, say an SVG, into JSON using an online conversion tool. Let's take a quick look at this file before we start working with it. What I really like about JSON files is the fact that they're really human friendly. They're easy to look at and easy to understand. Now JSON files have two main ingredients, keys and values. This is the key here, which is name, and this is its value, California. Same here, the year 1996, this is the key, and its value here is the median house price. We'll use California in this example. It's got loads of movement during this period. So here's my California layer, and you can see I've turned it into a 3D layer. And I want to move California up and down here using this Z position up to maybe about minus 50. This will be the max extrusion depth we'll use. Now I'm using the Cinema 4D renderer here just to give the state some 3D sides. I'll switch it back to zero. Okay, so we'll start our expression by holding option and clicking the stopwatch on my Mac. If you're on a PC, hold down the alt and click. Let's drag this out so it's a little easier to see. Now our goal here is to set the values for X, Y, and Z. So for this first value, X will leave it at zero. And the next value, Y, will also leave it as its default, which is one. And for my last value here, I'll replace it with the variable Z. So that's what we're trying to find. So X won't change, Y won't change, but Z here is what we're gonna calculate using our JSON file. So first up, I wanna bring in my JSON file. So at the top here, let's put in a few returns. I'll bring it in. I'll use my pick whip and I'll set this as my source data, semicolon. I'll load all of its data here into my variable prices. So that's how we connect to our JSON file. So in my simplified example here, I'm gonna run my animation from 1996 directly to the 2016 price. So I wanna look inside my prices variable at the fifth value, which is California. And I want this 1996 price here and I'll load it all into my variable price one. We'll do the same for 2016. So I've pulled the prices for 96 and 2016, and now I wanna animate between the two. So remember, we thought our extrusion depth should be no more than minus 50. And I wanna know what the minimum and maximum house prices were for that entire file. So that when we move on to the rest of the states, they've all got something constant to compare themselves against. So the lowest here was 42,683, semicolon, and the highest was 522, 180. So now I'm ready to work on my starting height for California. So my starting value is my price one minus the minimum, all divided by the maximum. That'll give me my percentage. Now if I times all of that by my extrusion depth, we should get the starting for my Z height, semicolon. So now let's work out the end value. So my in value is my price two divided by the maximum, all times by my extrusion depth, semicolon. Great. So we know my start and ending height now. Let's animate between them using an ease. We'll use the expression drop down here, interpolation, we'll use ease. And T is for time. We'll start it at one second and finish it here at four seconds. And we're gonna go between our start and end values, semicolon. Let's put our E's inside our variable Z, and Z is already here, ready to receive our animation. And we're ready now to preview it. California is moving up from 1996 through to 2016, all driven from our external JSON file. Now I've worked here with just two dates from California only to hopefully give you an understanding and a peek at the amazing potential of connecting JSON files to After Effects. 
I'll show you this more complete example here. And you can see now we're using all of the years with all of the states. You can see the colors update depending on the data in the JSON file. We've also created this handy control panel. So we can make easy sweeping changes to say our hot and cold colors, our extrusion depth, and how long this animation runs for. Let's look at this other example here for weather. This animation is driven again from our JSON file, which is great because it means it can be easily updated to say another city here simply by replacing our JSON file. I'll pick Shanghai. So we have the same visual style, but the temperature is now unique to this other city. Amazingly quick. And also, if you make a change to the data file, After Effects will update automatically whenever you save the project. So I hope you can see now the power of importing a JSON file to develop a motion graphic. We've just looked at two examples here, but I'm sure you can use your imagination and see how great this would be for, say, automating charts, graphs, infographics, creating show promos, communicating schedule changes, presenting motion capture data, or to potentially create the same graphic but to deliver that graphic in multiple languages, all using data-driven animations in Adobe After Effects.